And I want to give you an interesting word. Um, God's been laying on my heart. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, well, usually every pastor has a, a common theme that they go through in their life. Some pastors preach a lot on grace. Some pastors preach a lot on, on eternal security. Some pastors, you see them, they'll, they'll beat their congregation to death over sin. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You're a pastor, they'll beat their flock to death over sin. And here's what I want you to know. I, I do preach against sin. I hate sin. God hates sin. But one thing I want you to know, that if you have been born again, now listen to me, born again, that doesn't give you the license to sin. It means that you have been forgiven of your sin. You see what I'm saying? Um, so I want to, and my, it seems like my theme in my life has been uh, the way the activity of the Holy Spirit, the way it's worked in my life. It seems like a common theme in my life has been uh, exposed in a lot of lies. I think that the church has been lied to a lot over the centuries and over the years. And I really believe that one of my um, goals in life and one of my, I guess, what God's called me to do is to come in and, and to, to break the Bible verse by verse and to lay it in your lap and say, guys, this is what God says. This is what he said. Now, you've got to learn it. God's got to teach you working, working through his spirit. So tonight, I want to give you an interesting word, a word that really God's laid on my heart, the reason why I firmly believe that a lot of churches, a lot of people, a lot of individuals don't see signs, wonders, and miracles in their life is because of one word called unbelief. Unbelief. I wrote this down in the summer because I wanted to set the stage before I, before I minister and preach and teach tonight. And I hope this makes sense to you. And if there's any time in this lesson you say, Brian, I don't understand that or whatever, hold your hand up and we'll stop and we'll, we'll have a dialogue, okay? And I'll tell you straight up, um, you guys know I've been your pastor for around five years. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, uh, but uh, I do study the Word. And, and I, I want to study to show myself approved, right, in dividing the Word of God. But many times, listen to this, when we don't see the answer to our prayers, we believe we lack faith. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, well, I just don't have as much faith as they have? Or, man, I, you know, they talk about faith all the time, faith and faith. However, listen to this, at the point of salvation, every Christian received the measure of faith. Now listen to me, because this is a big teaching tonight, and I want this to get in your spirit. The moment you get saved, God gives you something called a measure of faith. Now, over the years, as long as you stay saved, as long as you're in the Word and being faithful to God and studying to show yourself approved, hopefully there's this big, long word that we call sanctification. Sanctification is a process. In other words, hopefully you're stronger today than you was even last week, okay? Hopefully as you grow older in Christ and mature in Christ, you'll become more... Um, Mature in Him, okay? But your faith will start growing, all right? God's given you a measure of faith. Watch this. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ, everybody under my voice can walk on water. I believe that. I believe everybody under my voice has the potential and has the faith to cast out demons. I believe under my teaching, under the anointing of God, and in the name of Jesus Christ, you have the anointing through Christ to lead all kinds of people to Jesus. You can do these things. I believe there's a gift in every one of you. But it's, listen to me. How do you activate that gift? It's there. It's there. It's in you. That gift is in you. God says, I've given everybody a measure of faith along with at least one gift. Everybody under my teaching tonight is, has a gift. You have a gift. How do you activate that gift? So I want to teach you a lesson tonight that a lot of people say, well, if I had the faith, I could move that mountain. If I had the faith, I could cast out demons. If I had the faith, I could do this and I could do that. No, what's this? You've got the faith, but there's something missing in your life that I believe affects every one of us in this room tonight. I'm going to hit it head on. See, what's this? The issue is not the lack of faith, but it's the presence of unbelief. There is a difference between having faith and not enough faith as far as unbelief goes. Okay? I had enough faith to say, God, come into my heart and save my soul. Forgive me of my sins. Redeem my spirit. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, take me to heaven. I'm saved. I'm born again. At that moment, faith is issued into my life. I've got enough faith in me to do whatever it takes. So how come the church is not seeing the miracles then? 
because of unbelief. It's because of unbelief. So I'm going to give you some more good word tonight, okay, on this stuff, all right? Listen, unbelief cancels out faith. Unbelief cancels out faith and renders, it renders our prayer ineffective. It didn't say that God didn't hear your prayers, but it can be ineffective prayers. Do you believe this? You can have ineffective prayers. When you sit there and say, listen, I, I've heard this, I've heard this, I've heard this a thousand and one times. I've asked people this. I said, you believe you can walk? You believe you can do this? You believe you can do that? You believe you're healed in the name of Jesus Christ? Just like that man we had over on Sunday morning. Y'all remember this? I asked, that's why I asked him this prayer. I said, do you believe you can be healed? Yeah. Do you believe God can heal you? Cricket, cricket. Cricket, cricket. Cricket, cricket. That's called unbelief. That right there. Now listen to me. I'm going to teach you, all right? That right there will hinder a prayer. That right there, when you sit and go, I know it's good for them, but it's no good for me. That's still unbelief. <laughs> And that is the number one thing I truly believe when I go in and I minister to churches all over and I deal with it. We have prayer meetings and God moves and this, that, and the other. And I can't tell you how many preachers have come back and how many deacons have come back and how many uh, people will come back and say, well, I just don't know if that's for us. You missed it. You've missed it right there. You've missed it right there. I've heard people say this. I can pray for others, but I can't pray for myself. But what it is, is it's, it's an issue of unbelief in your life. And I know this is going to be a tough lesson, but if you'll listen to me and listen to the words that I, that, I, that, I, that I read out of this Bible, it will help you with your unbelief. See, when we recognize unbelief in our hearts, that's, listen to me, that's the number one thing you need to underline that piece of paper right there. You, you, you as an individual must recognize your unbelief. The problem with the 21st century church the problem with the individuals is this. We recognize everybody else's problems, but we don't recognize ours. Uh-oh. We recognize what's going wrong with everybody else, but we never observe and take a look at ourself. Ourself. That God says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It is my job and my responsibility to work out my salvation. My salvation. I'm going to say it again. My salvation. And when I start working out my salvation, I start observing what God is doing in my life. People ask sometimes, Brian, I just wish I had some of your faith. You do. You've got it. Your problem is not faith. Listen to me. I know this is probably going to be a different teaching like you've never heard, but I want you to answer. You, you're saved. How many of you are saved? How many of you know that took the greatest faith in this whole wide world? That took the greatest faith in the whole wide world. So what goes from that point to where you're at now? There's something called unbelief. Unbelief. I guarantee you right now under my teaching, you're everybody in here is dealing with a situation that's based upon either you believe it or you don't believe it. Either you're juggling and you're struggling and there's some things going on in your life and it's based upon the number one thing is unbelief. Now listen to this. We must get rid of it. You must get rid of it. You must get rid of it. You must get rid of it. And listen to this. Or it will stop our faith. I'm a firm believer. People get so sick and tired of me, but I don't really care. They get so tired of saying all these things. We believe the Bible. Believe the Bible. This, that, and the other. But when it comes time for them to activate their faith into a situation, it's based upon one thing. Either you believe it or you don't. He said, well, Ron, I believe it, but... No, no, no. No, no, no. Listen to me. I'm trying to help you guys. I really am. Because this is going to be a good deep teaching for you. When you say it's in the Bible and I believe it, there's no more to that sentence. Period. Amen. Not a comma. A comma when I was in school, which I'm still in school, means it continues on. It goes on. When God says, amen, let it be, that settles it. Period. It's not up for discussion. Okay? So here, I want to talk to you tonight a little bit. Okay? I want you to turn your Bibles real quick with me to Matthew chapter 17. I'm going to go deep with y'all. Okay? Enough if I go a little deep with you tonight? No. Is that all right with you? All right. Way down deep. Way down deep. I'm joking. All right. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 17. I'm going to read this, all right? 
Now, this is a tough word. I'm telling you. This is a tough word, but I want you to get this in your spirit, okay? All right, here we go. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 17. And when they approached the multitude, a man came up to him, kneeling before him and saying, Lord, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible tonight, okay? I think this brings it out better. It's a translation. Um, some of you wanted to read it out of the NIV, but I'm reading out of the Amplified tonight. It said, Lord, do pity and have mercy on my son. Listen to this. For he has epilepsy. And my translation, he says that he's moonstruck. Now, I did a little study on that. In other words, it only hits at certain times. That's what that meant when he said he's moonstruck. It means it only hits at certain times in his life. Listen to this, though. And he suffers terribly. For frequently he falls into the fire and many times into water. Listen to this, verse 16. And I brought him to your disciples. Listen to this. This is some good word. I brought him to your disciples and they were not able to cure him. Verse 17. And Jesus answered, Oh, you unbelieving, look what my translation says, warped, wayward, rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation. Wow, that's Jesus talking? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. I'm going to stop right there just for a second. Here's the situation. Point A is this. All believers received a measure of faith when they received their salvation. 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1 talks about that. And Romans 12.3 talks about that. Listen to this. Therefore, if we're not getting results in our lives as Christians, the issue is not with our faith, but with our unbelief. Y'all, would y'all agree with that? It's not our faith. According to the scriptures, many more in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts is another book that talks about this. But I would have to tell you, and I would have to submit to you tonight as your teacher, is this. I firmly believe faith is not the issue. Unbelief is the issue of the church. We know the Bible. We've studied the Bible. We've had uh, evangelism conferences. We've had breakout prayer groups. We've even had people try to teach us how to pray. But here's the bottom line. If you don't believe what you're praying, it is hindering your prayers. Sure is. It's hindering, okay? Let me show you this. For example, a demon was causing a certain boy to have seizures. The boy's father brought him to the disciples, but they could not cast the demon out. We just read that in the Amplified Bible. Jesus said they couldn't cast out the demon. Listen to this. He said these words because they had unbelief. How many people do you know? I have this all the time. There'll be somebody wanting to get saved, and they'll be so insecure of their life that they'll say, call me. Now listen, this person could die at any moment. And they'll call me on the phone and they'll say, Brother Brian, uh, are you busy? No, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs. Well, listen, I'm working with somebody right now and they're lost and dying and going to hell and I need you over here right now to lead them to Jesus Christ. Watch this. You're in trouble. Because here's what this passage is going to tell you. I'm not coming to lead them to Jesus. You say, Brian, you're mean. You shouldn't say that. No, 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 no. God put, put someone in front of you, beside you, for you to lead to Jesus. And what you're doing is using the scapegoat. You know why? It goes back to unbelief. There's something in your mind at that point that goes, well, what if I don't say the right thing? Ooh, what if I lead in the wrong direction? Jim, what was you dealing with? Yeah, I, bet you, I guarantee you're sitting there going, oh, no. It's game day now. He was sweating. And then when he started sweating, the prisoners started sweating. Next thing you know, there's a holy sweat fest going off in the prisons. But Jimmy, let me ask you something. Did you call me? It's a good thing. It wouldn't have done no good. They wouldn't have let me in the prison. So what did you do? I just kept talking to him. I finally felt like I was almost pushing it on him. I just told him. Let me, let me help y'all. Are y'all ready for this? True salvation, all you have to do is just look at them. I'm telling you, there's been people at this church that will come to that altar. This is so good. They'll sit there and go, I'm ready to be saved. And I'm like, okay, pray. And they're going, what? I said, just open your mouth and start praying. Amen. Let me show you. The Holy Spirit is still alive. Amen. He is the one convicting. He's the one who's going to lead them to Jesus. He's the one that does the saving. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, that's just what all you have to do. And here's what I do to everybody. I don't pray that I'm stinking prayer no more. Here's what I tell them. I say, listen, if God is dealing with 
you, what's he saying to you? You say, Brian, you really do that? Yeah. And some of the most prettiest, simplest, beautiful prayers I've ever heard in my life. They'll make it so simple. They don't complicate us at their goal. Dear Lord, this is right for me again. I need you. I don't know what I'm doing, but Lord, you said if I confess you, you're coming to my heart and save me. God, I, I'm confessing you tonight. Save my soul. And you know what happens at that moment? Because nobody loves him no more than Jesus Christ. God loves him more than anybody in this world. See, most people under my teaching tonight are missing your biggest blessings because of unbelief. Scared to death to take that next step. Because you're afraid you're going to say the wrong things. Watch this. You're not the one saving them. Amen. Amen. You're not the one saving them. Matter of fact, I'm also going to go ahead and dig deep with you. I believe that God is truly dealing with them. They're going to confess Him, and they'll do it on the bedroom. They'll do it wherever they're at. They'll confess Him. Amen. They will. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. A lot of times, it, it always comes back to, back to you. Jesus said they could not cast out the demon because they had unbelief. The lack of faith wasn't the issue. Listen to me. The lack of faith wasn't the issue. Watch this. You say, Brian, how do you know? I'm glad y'all asked. Because in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, Mark chapter 6, verse 13, and Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6, the disciples cast out a lot of demons in that day. They cast out a lot of demons in that day. They, they, they bound them demons and stuff. So we said, Brian, if they had the faith to do it one time, where, what was going on this time? I'm glad y'all asked again. This was a different type of demon. This is one they never dealt with before. This demon had so much control over this young man, he would go into seizures and his body would just start convulsing. Now I know this is a Baptist church and you don't hear a lot of teachings about stuff like this. But I'm going to tell you something. It's time that the Bible gets preached back into the churches. Right. Yes, that's right. It's time that the pastor stands in front of the people and says, Thus saith the Lord. This happened. And it still happens today. And the reason why people, listen to me, the reason why people don't want to hear about it because it puts more pressure on them. Then the church has to be activated into something called a faith-believing church. Then the Bible in the New Testament has to come back to life where you can lay hands upon the sick and they shall arise. Where you can cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So what's about? We are a New Testament church. If I preach this word in a lot of churches, you know what happened after I preached it? They wouldn't let me come back. And that's okay because I don't want to be there anyway. They don't believe the Bible. They don't believe the Bible. And you say, hey, Brian, that's me. No, that's truth. Hey, don't it? It's truth. Why are we taking up for people who don't, who don't even believe like that? It blows my mind. I believe in being sympathetic and I believe in having compassion to set the other. But man, you've got pastors who've got the, the Bible in their hand. And if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, why are we leaving stuff out? It's very uncomfortable. Watch this. If a devil were to walk in here right now, it'd be very uncomfortable. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and just mess y'all up. He's already been here three or four times. He has been in my office. He said, what did he look like? Looked like a lot of you. <laughs> See, the devil can transform himself into an angel of light. The devil can, can speak sweet, sweet words. Amen. The devil can quote Bible verses. The devil can give a tithe. The devil can go to Sunday school. But one thing the devil will not do is say, Blessed be the name of God. I'll worship him. I'll praise him. And I'll live for him all the days of my life. So, man, what I'm trying to tell you is this. It's real. It is real as I'm standing here tonight. They had unbelief because of the situation was so terrible. Does that make sense now? He said, Brian, if they cast out demons, what was so different about this one? Y'all watch me. Here's what, here's what it was. They've never dealt with this type of demon before. You see that? They've never dealt with that type of demon before. I've dealt with screaming demons. <laughs> dealt with them. I, and you say, Brian, what do what, what, what they look like? They, I'm telling you, the Bible says that, that, that God told Peter, he said, Peter, I'm praying for you because the devil's trying to sift you like wheat. We know that here. But what's that mean? That means the devil's trying to come in and tear apart, and pull apart, <laughs> cause confusion, cause division, and all that. Listen, church is, to be honest with you, is one of the easiest things to be ran if it's ran correctly. 
Anytime there's confusion in a church, it's not of God, it is of the devil. That's right. yeah. So when you hear people doing this, that, and everything else, and blaming this, and blaming that, and talking about people, that is not of God. No, right. That is confusion. And how do you nip that really quick? Is this, y'all ready? If they're talking about somebody, I say, hang on just a minute. I got their cell phone number my, right now on my, my cell phone. Okay. Let me call them real quick and let me get them on the other line and let me let them hear what you're saying about them. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, for some odd reason, will show up. And they'll say, no, I can't do that. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is I'm trying to really set the church up and let you guys know that every single verse in this Bible, every single word that's in this Bible is real. It's real, guys. I'm standing here tonight, and it is real. And I'll be back on if I have to stand before the Lord and God say, Brian, you got to pump up and excite it. <laughs> but you didn't preach all the Bible. I'm not going to have to stand before the God and listen to that. I'm not going to have to do it. So what was wrong? They had unbelief. It wasn't their faith because they cast out many devils and demons before that time. The problem was they never met a demon like this before. So it caused confusion, and they didn't know how to handle the situation. Look at letter B. Right. Yes. My Bible, I don't, I don't want to shake the water, but the way my Bible is wording it is, it is their faith. Is what, so did they just allow the unbelief to cancel their faith? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, if you read on down, we'll get that in just a moment. It says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you'll be able to move a mountain. But because you don't have the faith, the unbelief is trying over the faith. Y'all getting it now? So it's either faith or unbelief. And if you have the faith of one of the smallest seeds in the world, you can move a mountain. But God said, the reason why so many people are looking at that mountain and praying, they're saying, they're going, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, move mountain. I didn't move. That gone it. I guess it's about me. I, maybe I'm just not praying right. Maybe I'm not, I'm not, I don't got the right language, or the right lingo. Maybe something's not right. Maybe I didn't say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of, I don't know. But you see, how many of y'all have ever prayed for somebody and, and at that moment, God may not have answered your prayer, but you walked away with a doubt in your mind? Come on. Yeah, I have. I walked in the hospitals and laid hands on people and I'm like, Lord, have mercy, what's going on? And I'll be honest with you, it's not your faith. It's somewhere in your heart, some, something's going on, it's unbelief. Either you're, you're sitting there, and I've done this before too. I hear, I hear a word from a, from a pastor or whatever, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. I'm telling you, Satan will come through disbelief and unbelief, and he won't mess with your faith. Here's your faith. Your faith is believing God is your Lord and Savior. The ultimate faith has been settled. So now from here to there, what, what's going on? It's called unbelief. So, yeah, Travis, what, what in those verses, he said, oh, ye unbelieving, perverse, wayward, backward generation." Your unbelief has triumphed over your faith. But he said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. But something between your faith and your unbelief, something's not right. Does that make more sense? And you know what? God spanked me today. Because there's been times I've walked away and I said, well, how many of you ever said this? Well, that must not be God's will. Everybody in here said that word. What if I told you? Maybe God just waited to see if you're going to stick in there. What if I told you maybe God just put you through a test to see if he can trust you? See, God tests you to make sure he can trust you. What if I told you it's not about your timing, it's about God's appointment? And see, it's not about when he does it. He is going to do it. Let's just have breath, claim it, and walk away. Claim it. Faith, faith, true faith will walk away and say, you know what? Wait, you know what? Here's, the, here's, here's what Satan tries to mess with me. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to shoot y'all straight up, okay? Here's Wade back in the house. He walked to us tonight and he's back in a wheelchair tonight. What's happening? What's going on? We're going to have a good Bible study tonight. What's going on? He walked Tuesday, but he's back in a wheelchair tonight. What's going on? Listen to my head. God's time. God's time, man. See, what we do, what I do. What we need to do is keep claiming. Keep claiming. What I tell you, keep wiggling your toes. Yes. Keep moving. There you go. Keep wiggle, 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 wiggle. Whatever you got to do, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. You got to keep claiming. You got to keep cl claiming and picking it up. I know what happened to me. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. 
And you'll do that. That's right. See, where Satan will come into a church and into individuals, who's what he'll do? Well, he's still in a wheelchair. Y'all, y'all, this is a good Bible thing. I'm squaring y'all up tonight. I've done it. See, but this is the here's how God can heal me and heal you. Is when I observe my heart and say, Brian, why are you not believing? And I'm, in my lesson, I'll show you just a little bit more, man, time flies. I got 10 minutes. But what we do, because we are, we are a physical Seeing, touching, feeling, feeling. If I don't see it, if I don't hear it, if I don't touch it, we are a five senses church a lot of times. And what happens is, if we don't see it, we don't believe it. But God says, and He says, you better, you're better off not to see it and believe it because greater is your reward. So what God said, even though it's the word from the Lord, even though I can't see what's going on in Wade's legs, blessed be the name of God, there's power, there's blood, you're still moving, you'll still walk, you'll get up. I can't see it, but I believe it. You see what I'm saying? Because most of y'all, if you don't see it, if you don't hear it, if you don't touch it, unbelief will sit in. Said in, evidently it said into the disciples because they'd already seen that and now they had unbelief. Yes, and sir. Do it this time. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. But y'all see how we all were just like disciples. Really, you know what a disciple is? Is a follower of God. How many of y'all are followers of God? <laughs> so guess what you are? You're a modern day disciple. We also live in a microwave generation. It will it, yeah. A and microwave. Because I was just sitting here thinking the same thing. Our uh, Sunday school class had this discussion last Sunday. About it's instant internet. You can go to Google. You can type a chocolate cake recipe, and there it is. Amen. Seconds, and you've got it. And we can't wait. We can't wait on the Lord. But that's what Scripture says: is you wait on the Lord and you trust in Him. But there's nothing like that blessing that you wait right. for, and then you get. There's nothing. We are, and I, I, I'm a microwave pastor. We want it now. If I see it, I want it now. I can see it. Build the dreams. Build it. They'll come. What if I told you that's a lie from hell? I know churches that have went two or three million dollars in debt and they're sitting empty today. That's right. But God says, if the hand of the Lord builds it, you preach my name and I will hallelujah. I will draw men and women, boys and girls, into the kingdom. We could go three million dollars in debt, which we're not. Because here's the I, I, I've got a little age on me now. I'm 41, getting a little wiser. Got a little gray on the sides, or whatever that means. We can go three million dollars in debt just because we build it. Don't mean they're going to come. But if God builds the house, right. they'll come. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is this: just because you pray it and it does not happen instantaneously, doesn't mean God's still not working. Amen. Amen. Because God, right now, even though we're at church in the atmosphere of the spiritual realm, He is out there working on our behalf. Praise God. He is out there working on our behalf. And God loves his church. God doesn't want his church to fail or to go under. And God says, all I'm asking El Corn Baptist Church to do is to preach my name and to be soul winners. Watch this. It's simple. Preach my name and be soul winners. What do you think? Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. That's what he said. Go in therefore into all the world, preaching and teaching the gospel, and baptize them in my name. And next thing you know, boom, the church of, uh, in Acts at Pentecost got built, was established. Because why? They listened to the voice of God, and they, they built God's house. Look at this real quick. Listen to this. We can have faith and unbelief simultaneously. Now, I know this don't make sense, but Travis just hit it on the head just a while ago. Yes, 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 I am a faith-believing pastor, but I still deal with unbelief. Now, when y'all can say that... You're dealing with a great issue. <clears throat> There's still things in my life I'm still dealing with about my unbelief. How about y'all? Yeah. And when you can say that, I don't, I don't understand it all. I don't comprehend it all. I trust the Lord, but I don't understand it all. Look here in, in uh, Mark chapter 11. I'll read this to you real quick. 
Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Mark 11, 23. It says, Truly, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all, does not what? Doubt. Does not what? Doubt. Right there, I'm going to be honest with you, is where I mess up. Yeah. You're sitting there, he said, Brian, do you really believe that God literally meant a, a mountain? Yep. Yep, I sure do. He said, Brian, how come we don't see it? Unbelief. Unbelief. Had a woman in my last church where I was at, she went to me and I've done a message. I preached my heart out that one Sunday morning and sitting at the back door like all good Southern Baptist pastors do, shaking hands. God bless you. Thank you, man, for being here. And I'll see you tonight. Oh, I won't be here tonight, preacher. I'll, I'll see you next Sunday. Oh, God bless you. Just put your tithe and offering in the offering plate, you know. I'm joking. But anyway, uh, she was leaving. She said, I don't believe that stuff you preached today. Just told me right to my face. And I said, well, I said, at least you're bold enough to tell me you don't believe it. And I said, you don't have to worry about it. She said, what do you mean? I said, it never happened to you. And she looked at me and she said, well, you mean you got to put it like that. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know? Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm praying this over my salvation, my life. I want to be able to look at a mountain and say, be removed in the name of Jesus. I want to be able to walk on water. And I'm not just telling you guys this because I, I, want, to, I want to be in the, on, on, in the news journal. Forget the news journal. Love the news journal and do a great job. But I'm talking about just me and God. I'm talking about on Green River Lake. No boats around. I get out into a little cove or something and say, God, let me walk. You say, Brian King? See? I'm just going to be being honest with y'all. I'm just going to take out my heart and just sit down here in front of you. I want to believe this. How many of y'all want to believe that? See, that's faith. Faith says you can. Faith says you've been saved. Faith says you have Jesus Christ. But the rest of it depends upon me and you. you got to believe it. I've got God. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. You say, Brian, now this is going to blow y'all's mind. Here's how I know you can have faith and unbelief at the same time simultaneously. I've never seen Jesus Christ. I've never seen a white horse fly. I believe it. But how many of y'all still sometimes struggle? Oh, yeah. I am so thankful that we're in a house tonight. This says, you know what, Brian, I, I do. That don't mean you're not saved. Y'all got me? That don't, have, that don't have nothing to do with your salvation. Because the faith in you says, God, I don't understand it, but I believe I'm saved. Even though Doubt and Thomas, y'all remember Doubt and Thomas in the Bible? Then everybody fusses about Doubt and Thomas. I love Doubt and Thomas. Doubt and Thomas, said, Jesus comes up to him and he says, I'm God. He says, let me see your hands. <laughs> y'all remember that? If you're God, I want to see your hands. There's nothing wrong with saying that. And once God looked like that, he said he seen the holes in his hands. He knew that that was God. I don't know about you guys. I like to sit there and tell you I've got it all figured out. I'm a guru, a, a Jesus junior, and this, that, and the other. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still a work in progress. I'm still learning. I believe there's a God. I know I'm going to heaven. I believe one day, I, I mean, I like to ride horses every once in a while, but giddy up. Yeehaw, I'm going to ride a horse one day. Yes, sir. I believe that. But boy, I tell you, in the fleshly mind, this is what you're battling with. Your spirit's not battling, but your flesh is. That's why I've told you guys from day one, I am a spirit, I have a soul, but I live in a body. The Bible says that your flesh and your spirit, they war all day long. You know to do right, but glory hallelujah, you still do wrong. You have a witness. You know why? Because if you can pinch an inch, you live in the flesh. And watch this. I wish I could give you a great theological answer here tonight. But as long as you live in a body, it's going to wage against the Spirit. Your Spirit's going to sit there and go, yep, God's coming back one day. Boy, you'll feel it every once in a while. You know what I'm talking about? Some days you feel like you can run through a wall. Some days you feel like you can lay hands on the sick and they will arise. But boy, 
I'm telling you, that old flesh sits there and go, it ain't real. Your prayers ain't working. Why this happened? Well, if that happened, why is this happening? And this, that, and the other. Let me go ahead and tell you. Here's why. You still live in the flesh. He said, well, Brian, I thought we would go really deep tonight. It's right on. I'm just being honest with you. My spirit, my mind is made up. I'm heaven bound. But boy, my flesh don't want me to go to heaven. My flesh wants me to go to hell. <coughs> Y'all getting it? Yeah. So how do I know that? What's this? Hang on. I'm going to stop there. Well, the boy's father, even after Jesus hit him, said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. So right there it goes to show you, I believe you are God. You can heal him, but please help my unbelief. Well, Jesus said, uh, if you can believe, all things are possible in him who believes. If, 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 if is a big word. Two letters, but it's one of the biggest words in the Bible. If, if you believe, all things are possible. If. So watch this. When y'all walk out that door tonight, wait. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will walk. You will walk. You. I don't see what God is doing. I don't hear all the things that God is doing. I can't feel everything that God is doing. But I know that you're late. This is what God spoke unto me. You ready? He told me that night, that Tuesday, I'll never forget this. I wrote it down in some notes. That your legs are blood bought. Amen. Amen. Blood bought. So how about this? I would much rather err to the side of grace and healing and look what God is doing than quit being a stinking naysayer and say, oh God, I don't believe it. I don't know what's going on. Give God praise and say, God, thank you that you're going to heal me. That's a lot of people to be saved. Here's what they'll do. They'll be a great healing. They'll have a business meeting. Satan wants to throw every dart he can. Every dart he can. I'm not going to lie. Now, I'm going to say it too. When I walked around there on Wednesday night after the Tuesday night, I saw him, you know, he was, he was in the wheelchair. And that thought come to my head, and I just said, you have to say I rebuke that. So, so me, get me out here. What are you doing now? Oh. How do you feel now that you still see him in the wheelchair? Right. Talk to me a little bit. What's going on in your spirit right now? I'm, I'm still claiming that he can walk. He will walk. He will walk. He will walk. He will walk. And when I talked to Wade on the phone, I called you. Confirmation. I'm glad you're here, but I thank you for being here. You said, dang, every time I go to church, I'm top of your discussion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Welcome to church, brother man. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad you're here. Yeah. I talked to him. I said, he said these words. You know, it may not mean a lot to a lot of people taking two steps. <laughs> but if he's been in a wheelchair since 2008, Amen. 10, he said, to me, two steps Amen. was a choice to me. See, then we sit there and try to downplay what God is doing. I need to. I'm still working on it. How about you, Jim? You still working on it? Me too. We ain't got all this stuff figured out. But give God praise. And you got to have belief. And you got to have belief. Quit doubting and say, God, I don't understand it. Help my unbelief. And boy, when you can say prayers like that, that's the real deal right there. That's And what we learn in the journey and what those around us learn as well that's not more important than the outcome, but as important. You know, what is he doing through him that, what is God doing through him in our lives because we saw that? And how much have we grown and how much are we moving forward in our walk with Christ because of what he started a week and a half ago? But he may not bring to completion for 10 years. That's right. Because look what it's doing to Wade. Yeah. Is your faith growing? Yes, sir. Just, keep, was, just uh, keep praising because praising habits, man. Yeah. I, was, I wasn't there that night. And, and Brother Eddie Penn, uh, he had called me and told me about it. And, and I didn't see it, but I knew it was, I knew it was real. Because I know how God is. I know what God has done in my life. And, just to me, just to see him tonight. I didn't heard about it, so it touched me that, and I, well, I didn't see it. It was unseen, but I had faith. I knew, and I didn't even know it. And uh, I just was told, and I took the testimony that he had went through, and I shared it with people that knew the old Rick. Mm -hmm. And they was like, God bless, man. What's going on with this guy? And I told him, I said, Guess what happened at the revival the other night? The guy got up on the wheelchair and walked. That, was, that hadn't walked, because I knew it was real, but I know what he can do. I know what he's done in my life. 
So that's unseen. I didn't see it. I believe it. You know, so it was just a miracle that he just touched lives and didn't even know it. And then each of his testimony has already been shared. And reach people. And we're going from glory to glory, to faith to faith. And it's just about a journey. Live while you're living. And how many of you know we was all crippled one time? Yeah. How many of you know all of us in here wasn't walking at one time? But praise be unto God, we all got up now. Amen? And we're all walking because Jesus said walk. So wait, whether you can see it or not, you're walking with God now. Walking with God. But he will walk. Yeah, he will. And when he does, I'm going to... I'm telling you, I'm not going to do that. I want to, but I'm not. In the flesh, I want to. But he will walk. I'm ready. <laughs> and the main thing, don't miss the main thing happened to you. What happened to you? He got saved. Y'all hear me? He got saved. He got saved. And we're talking about him walking, and he is walking with God because he's saved. Right? That's right so that's the greatest miracle of it all. Amen. 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 Can't you got something? Yeah, I was just going to say it's kind of weird. You know, I look at things for to try to analyze the yeah, biggest outcomes there is. And it's like a divine appointment to be sitting in here tonight because over the last week, I spent a lot of time sitting in the refinery and praying and stuff. Uh, I had this. Sand pop my head, real calm, you know. Instead of saying sin is believing, it's believing is sin. I said, no, it's not. Sin is believing, and it all of a sudden pop my head. No, believing is sin. And I, I thought about that all week, what that meant. And I'm sitting here tonight, and it's just really messed with me. Mm -hmm. It's good, you know, yeah. because it stretches. Yeah. And I, I talked to you about it one day. I feel like ever since I've been in grade school, I've been ingrained and indoctrinated because I'm real scientific about the way I think about things. And I finally had to give up a lot of things because it always stretched me to analyze everything. And I finally just said, you know, I don't care whether I understand it or not. I just believe it. I believe it. And let it go. That's exactly why my favorite verse is the Proverbs, lead not to I don't understand. Trust in the Lord. Trust, trust in the Lord. You know, I've not been to heaven yet, but I'm going. But my place still tells me, Clint, are you sure? Well, what if it ain't real? Oh, are y'all like that? Yes. Oh, are you, I mean, I deal with stuff like this. I, I, I know I'm exposing my heart tonight. You said, Brian, God, you're leaving us? Aren't y'all crazy? It's like, you know, yeah. But I believe it in my spirit. That's why I am a spirit. And my flesh battles against my spirit daily. That's why we go through these struggles every day. Is that my spirit, God saved me. That's why when you die, watch this. Good, good, good point. When you die, they bury your body, but your spirit goes to live with the Lord. Amen. Your fleshly body can't go to a heavenly dwelling. My Amen. God. So that's why when the horn sounds, our spirit comes back and you get a new body, glorified body, and you go to heaven. Because this flesh cannot take heavenly things. That's why your flesh wars against your spirit all the time. Does that make sense? So I'm glad y'all deal with it too. I'll just keep dealing with it. Amen. Just keep dealing with it. Let's stand and have a word of prayer, guys. I'm sorry for keeping y'all about seven minutes long, but uh, had a great time with you tonight. Father God, golly, Lord, I just believe so much revelation went forward tonight. And such as your disciples said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I think we all deal with things in this room and in this house to God, and we deal with unbelief. Our spirit knows that we're saved, but our flesh don't want us to be saved. Our spirit knows that people can walk, but boy, our flesh don't want them to walk. God, that's a good word, church. Our spirit believes that dead things can come to life, but boy, our flesh wants to die. So, Lord, I believe that's a word for us in here tonight. Even though I, I know I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven, hallelujah. Lord, my flesh wants me to die and go to hell. So, God, I know I'm bad on that, dear God, but Lord, as for me in this house, Hallelujah. We will serve the Lord. Yes, we and God will give you praise, even though we don't understand. Help our unbelief. Yes. And Lord, until we meet you, we say praise the Lord. In Jesus' name and all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Let's give God one more hand clap. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. See you Sunday.